let's go ahead and find the derivative of this trigonometric function, sine of x. So we want to know what is the derivative of this function, sine of x. We probably know that this is cosine of x. And we're going to derive that by using the limit definition. So we know by limit definition, a prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So since this is f of x, we're going to replace that into this definition. So we need to find what is f of x plus h is. So I'm going to input x plus h into this function. So we will have sine of x plus h. So that's what we're gonna replace in our limit definition. This is equal to the limit as h approaches zero, f of x plus h. Well, that's simply sine of x plus h minus f of x, that's sine of x all over h. Now, key idea here is to expand this by using the sum of two angles formula for sine. So let's go ahead and recall that. So if you remember sine of two angles, let's say x plus y, that's going to be sine x cosine y plus cosine x sine y. Now, instead of y, we're using x plus h. So I'm gonna replace that with h right here. So you'll have sine x cosine h, plus cosine x sine h. That's what we're going to replace right in here. So if we do that, this is what we are going to obtain. So we have the limit as h approaches zero. So sine of x plus h using the sum formula. This is sine x cosine h plus cosine x sine h minus sine x from before all over h. Now you want to group them in this way. So if you notice, you can drop the brackets from the first two terms. And here this term has a sine x and here I have a sine x. So I can put those two together. So I'll group them together. I will have the limit as h approaches zero, sine x, cosine h minus sine x. And I'm just gonna rewrite the middle term, cosine x, sine h, everything over h. And now, since I grouped them next to each other, these terms, I will factor out sine of x. So this gives me the limit as h approaches zero of sine x times cosine h minus one since I factor a sine x from these two terms. And I'm still left with the last term, cosine x and sine h all over h. Now I'm going to separate them into two separate limits. So this will give me the limit as h approaches zero. So first I'm gonna write this one right here. That would be sine x times cosine h minus one over h plus the limit of that function as h goes to zero, cosine x times sine h all over h. And now here, we're going to play around with this a little bit more. So this limit right here, it belongs to h. So that means sine x is treated as a constant. So you can kind of pull it outside the limit. So by using the limit laws, this is sine x times the limit as h approaches zero of cosine h minus one over h. And similarly for the second limit, this is treated as a constant. So I will pull it outside the limit. That gives me plus cosine x times the limit as h approaches zero of sine h over h. Now here's something you have to remember. This limit right here, 
That's one of the limits we often happen to know from memory that this limit is zero. And also this limit right here, that's another very well-known limit. This is going to be one. So what we have is simply the sine function on the front times zero from the first limit plus cosine of x times the limit of that function, that's one. And of course this is zero. So all of this gives us cosine of x. Therefore, we say that the derivative of sine x is cosine x, as we have proven by using the limit definition.